Hey there, Sparkers. Welcome to another episode of our Tips and Tricks. In this uh, episode, we are going to be covering collectibles. So what are collectibles? Collectibles are usually items that are kind of scattered across the map, and you have to find them all, or at least try to anyway, right? Um, the most basic collectible that you guys will find in Project Spark is actually a coin, and it already has a lot of good default logic on it um, to show kind of how collectibles work and how you can build your own. So let's just pull, pull a coin out of the gallery here. And we'll even, we can place a few of them down. Get a couple, a little grouping here, and go to test. So, just that's all I've done in this world so far. Um, just drop those coins, I collect that, and you can see here as I start picking them up, I have, right, like right now I picked up five coins, then I get this guy, then I have six, and then I get that guy, and I have seven. And so that's really a standard collectible, right? So there's, a, there's an item that I'm collecting, uh, there's some kind of number that's going up because I'm collecting more of them. So there's usually more than one. Uh, it's not a unique item. There's there's more than one. And then there's also some kind of display that's happening to my character. So if I, uh, let's delete a couple of these here. And if I just look at one coin, uh, let's look at the brain and see what's doing that. So uh, the main thing to be aware of is, you know, there's some stuff going on here. You might not know all of it. Um, uh, but the, the main thing to realize is that when it detects my player, it decides that, hey, so uh, that player, it's going to be defined as this new object variable called player, and I'm going to do things to that player, uh, or do some, you know, interact with that player. So I'm going to, one, check to see if, uh, let's see if I can get that, uh, check to see if that player has um, a display coin counter brain. If it doesn't, I'm going to add that display to them. Then I'm going to also increase its uh, this number variable called coin counter by one. Uh, so that's that nu that's that uh, number that we were seeing that five six seven uh, that number is the coin counter number and then we're also going to have that player pick me up um, and we're going to play an effect and we're going to uh, switch to another page so there's some things happening with in inventory here uh, with like pickup and on this next page here about dropping from inventory don't even worry about that you guys don't need that um to make a uh, a very you know a basic collectible um, and I'll show you how to build one from scratch too. Uh, the display is also very simple. Um, this display coin counter brain, uh, it's actually just a single line of code. Uh, if you ever come across a brain like that in the gallery that's used and you don't know how to look at it, uh, the easiest thing to do is just pull up a, a logic cube, uh, just empty, and then look in its brain. Of course, it's, there's nothing there. And then I'll go to brain gallery and find uh, that brain that I was looking for. So it was display coin counter is what I'm looking for. Uh, displaying coin count. There we go. So it's just this one line, um, and that's, that's the actual on-screen thing that I saw where I can see uh, display coin, um, so that was the background, uh, times by uh, that, uh, um, or an X, I should say, so just X uh, plus that coin counter uh, number. And so I just made sure that the character has some kind of display there. So that's all that's happening um, with those coins. Uh, it's very, um, you know, pretty simple actually to, to build something like that from scratch. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, let's just let's uh, collect. Um, let's say codite. Uh, that's a, another typical currency I've seen in a lot of games. Uh, let's just do this one. We'll just put one right here in front of my character. Uh, let's rename it. Let's just call it codite collectible. Collectible. Okay. All right. So. Uh, in order for us to know when we're going to pick it up, we have to be close to it. And we're going to use detect to find that out. Um, so if I open up this object and go to edit, and go to properties, uh, brain, and then sensors, and then I want to make sure this is visible. Uh, so I want to show the detect sensor, make it true. And then I can see that radius. So as soon as my character um, would enter this, um, it would be detecting uh, that object. And I can grab this little guy here uh, using a controller and uh, actually shrink that down. If I want it a little bit smaller radius, we'll just make it the smallest possible. And let's jump now into this collectible brain here. And all we need to say is when I, again, we're gonna use that sensor. So when detect, and we're gonna look for a player. Uh, so when I detect a player, I'm going to do um, a few things. I'm gonna use the same uh, logic that uh, the coin did and set a new object variable called player. Uh, it looks like I already have one made for me. So I'll just do player and then I'll do equals it. So that's the thing that I am detecting on the win side. So objects it. 
and I want to make sure that this player, it's gonna, uh, the player is gonna have a number variable um, in his brain. So let's, uh, or associated with him. So let's do a number, and we're gonna do a new number variable. And let's call this uh, Kodai Collected. And every time I collect one of these, we only want our uh, um, the number to go up by one, right? So each one is is a uh, is one to be found, right? So increment by, and then we're gonna go values, number, numbers, one. There we go. And we don't want this to stay on the map uh, after my player does find it, right? So we just need to have uh, um, destroy this object and take it away from the world. So there we go. We'll get rid of that. Let's just grab a few of these and then place them here. All right, let's go to test. So now when my player gets them, he's gonna, uh, essentially he's collecting them right here, but I, I don't have any information uh, being displayed to me, right? So I forgot a very important uh, component of collectibles, and that's some kind of display uh, that lets me know how much I've gathered so far. Um, so let's fix that, let's add a display. Um, let's delete some of these copies. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that, so every copy here has that same code, and I'm still working on this collectible. I'm not done yet. So I don't want to uh, you know, have to put in code in a bunch of places. Uh, I'd rather just work on one, right, right here, and then um, eventually put copies around the map. But, but I'll even show you a better way to do that um, with collectibles um, toward the end of this video. So let's add a display now to this character. Let's go to open, and it's gonna just take a single line of code to do that. So uh, let's add here on the do side, we're gonna go to appearance, display, and then we're going to uh, do a new text, new text, and this is just gonna be uh, Kodai collected. We'll do a colon and then a space there. And then I always like to separate my uh, text strings um, with uh, pluses, so we're gonna just do plus, and then we're gonna do that same number variable we created before in the player. So that number was code I collected. There we go. And then we need to give this a position to display at. Right now it would just display in the, in the center of my screen, which is kind of on top of my character and in the way. So let's go to modifiers, positioning, screen location, and let's put this in the uh, screen top right. I liked where the coin was, so let's, let's mimic that and put it in screen top right. And we wanna make sure um, everybody can read that. Uh, and sometimes the default size is a little too small, especially if you're uh, on Xbox. So let's go to font size and then extra large font. Okay, let's test that. And uh, sure, we'll uh, add a couple of these just so we can make sure that goes up correctly. One, two, three, and four. Perfect. So doing exactly what I wanted to do. Um, one thing we want to look at, so at the beginning, um, it was correctly set to zero, right? I didn't have anything collected because the game just started. So number variables, uh, just like the one we created here, code I collected, uh, there is, it starts off at zero. Um, but we want to make sure, we want to initialize that and give that a variable uh, and kind of a reminder to ourselves. So I'm going to sneak this, uh, this, this line up because uh, I want this once tile. Um, and let's just make sure code I collected here at the very beginning equals zero. Um, so again, the once tile will only run one time at the very beginning uh, when this line runs, and it'll uh, make sure that that number equals zero. And if I wanted to right, give myself 10 to start with, I could do that. Maybe it's a currency, and I wanted to start my player off with uh, some kind of, uh, you know, start. You know, he didn't, you know, it wasn't totally bare bones. He could maybe go buy a sword or something, right, if it was coins we were talking about. Or maybe Kodai is the collectible in, uh, currency in this world, right? But we'll start with zero. We're gonna keep them bare bones for now. Um, we also um, can do something uh, I think pretty neat here. Uh, let's make it so we can see the total amount of code that's in the world. So I always know how much is remaining that I need to find. Um, to do that, uh, let's delete these guys again, uh, the copies, and let's look in here. So on this guy, when he first comes up into the world, uh, let's make uh, a new number variable that we're gonna add to him. So let's do once, we only need to happen one time. And this is gonna be used by all the collectibles and my click characters, so let's make it a global variable so everybody can reference this number. So let's global values, and we're gonna do a new number variable. Let's just call it total codite collected, or uh, collect, let's call it not collected, uh, collectibles, let's say. Total Kodai collectibles. You always want to be very clear on what you're uh, 
your um, names of your number or your variables in general are. It'll help you a lot down the road. And let's just say that we're going to increment that by one. So every time one of these is uh, in the world, at the very beginning it'll count one. So it'll keep track of how many are there. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. All right. So now I have that in my collectible brain. I can go over here to my player. And let's let's change up this uh, to show how many I've collected out of the total, right? It's kind of like a fractional. Um, so let's uh, add a plus here. And I actually do want a fraction. Uh, so let's go to text new text and a good way to do this is space uh, um, forward slash and then uh, space again enter that let's do another plus and then we're gonna go pull up that new uh, variable we just created which was global remember that global very important uh, number one thing I see with very vari uh, variables and a uh, hard time for new users um, or uh, yeah new people uh, new to project spark is uh, forgetting if their variables are local or global. So they're local if there is no uh, modifier in front of it. Global means uh, it's the same variable shared across. So we looked at total Kodai collectibles. So that, that number is going to also show up in my display. So let's go again, place a bunch of these guys. Let's do four. So now I didn't even have to tell it right that there was four. I just placed four. Now there's four. Um, out of four, right? So I go one, so I have one out of four, two out of four, three out of four, and then four out of four. Pretty awesome. All right, so that covers really the 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 main things I wanted to show in this uh, tips and tricks video. There is one more thing I think would be a really good tip for everybody. So you can see that every time I'm doing this testing, I have to uh, delete all these copies here, and that's kind of frustrating. Um, every time, right? But let's say I have some level design done and I like where I placed these and I don't want to move them and change them. Uh, a, good, a good habit to get into when you have anything repeated over across your map is to actually use a template to, uh, to spawn those things in. So if I go here onto my collectible and go to brain and template, make that true, this is going to make this into basically like a blueprint that I can stamp anywhere along into my uh, world. And if I go to test here, You'll notice that there's there's nothing there actually, and that's because I haven't told it to be to be created yet. So let's do that. So let's go and let's pull up a logic cube here, and we'll just call this. Uh, give it a name here. Let's we'll call it Kodai Spawner. And all we'll do in this brain is say once, and we're gonna say create. Uh, we want to tell it what to create, and we'll point use the in-world picker to choose our Kodai collectible. And then, uh, by default, I'll just be at the position in this logic cube, so I don't need to specify any more than that. And then I just want this logic cube to destroy itself afterwards. So there we go. And now, I can take this guy and place a whole bunch of them. So here's that cluster again. Go to test. Now I have a ton of them and they were all in those get created in the spots that I said so I had six that time five and six awesome now what's really great about this situation is I can place these all around my map right anywhere that I'm I have gameplay you know want to uh, associate the collectible and where to put it but now I can change code just in this template and it'll uh, be reflected in all of those different spawns so if I go here now into this Kodai collectible uh, let's uh, make it a little bit prettier, right? Kind of like the code. Uh, so let's say, uh, let's give it movement. We'll say ya, and we'll do that slowly. So now it'll turn kind of slowly, kind of catch the eye of the player. And then we'll also, when um, the player picks it up, let us add a plain effect. So go to create and then play effect. We can just choose one straight out of the gallery. Let's do, let's not do that one. Uh, I think a good one would be, let's see. Pick up, uh, yeah, pick up B looks good, I think, with Kodai. All right, so now when I make those changes, it's going to be reflected in all the ones that get um, spawned into the world at the very beginning. So now you can see they're, they're all turning slowly, and then when I pick it up, there's going to be that effect, too. There we go. See that effect? And that's kind of just nicer, um, kind of a nice uh, thing for the player to see that little effect upon pickup. 
You can also add a sound. Um, there's a lot of good sounds, uh, like the coin does one by default, um, but others. So two, three, four, five, and six. And again, we did the the way that we did this incrementing this, uh, not in that brain, uh, this brain. Uh, the way that we incremented here is I never have to keep track of the total amount of collectibles. I can just add them and it'll immediately compensate for the total amount, um, which is much easier than having to go count them all, right? So if I ended up having a hundred of these guys around the map, I wouldn't be like, oh, I, you know, I added one and I, you know, but I forgot where I was, so I need to count them all up and get a total because I hard coded it in his brain. I now just am using a number variable to, to do that. So, well, there you go. I think that covers it for all the things you can do with collectibles, um, at least the very basics. Again, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, any suggestions for future tips and tricks or other tutorials, uh, just let us know. Uh, but that'll about do it. So thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys. Project Spark is where players create and creators play. What better way to be inspired than to see what's possible? This will surely spark your imagination. Now, how do we begin?